So these are some of our flagship events that we put on throughout the year. Um, so in the fall, it, there is National Transfer Student Week where we have one of our first transfer student spotlights. Um, last year with everything remote, this is what I was working through. So we didn't have in-person events. Um, hopefully this year we will though. So um, that will look like a week long event uh, process where we should have some uh, activities with food, different workshops for transfer students and the opportunity to win prizes from raffles and much more. Um, in the winter, this past winter, it was when we had our transfer storytellers contest and gallery. Um, and so transfer students like you all um, are able to submit any form of art in order to tell your transfer story, your transfer experience um, to have the opportunity to win a scholarship or prize money. Um, and so there are some transfer peer coaches like myself who uh, helps uh, score and like see who will win that along with other staff and faculty. And you'll have the opportunity to have that connection to those staff and faculty as well through that experience. Um, and so in the spring, we also do different partnerships with other departments to ensure that you're ready for your next year as a transfer student. So this past year we did maximizing your next year as a transfer and we did that with um, many different departments on campus, including like the biology department, psychology and like international studies, like my department. Um, and so those are just some of the highlights of events that we have. And then the main thing that we do in the Triton Transfer Hub is peer coaching. So like myself and Alo and our, our um, transfer peer coaches, um, we do have transfer peer coaching sessions for the summer. Um, we are on, there are only four of us transfer peer coaches, including Alo and myself. Um, but come the fall, there will be 10 transfer peer coaches that you will be kind of automatically assigned. Um, you can meet with any other transfer peer coach as well, but um, one will be specifically reaching out to you throughout the year. Um, and so you can come to us with any questions, big or small, um, whether you know, like, if you have just a quick question or if you don't know where, like, what resources to reach out to. Um, we are trained in basic advising and career support. Um, and so if you have any questions or you would, you, you would like someone to go over your resume or cover letter and you're not able to get in contact with the Career Center yet, um, we are able to help that help you out with that. And um, currently all of our appointments are remote and like through Zoom, um, but come the fall, we will have a hybrid of in-person over the phone and online appointments. Um, and so, yeah, if you have any quick questions for us this summer, you can feel free to make an appointment with all of myself or the other two peer coaches that are here. And then in the fall, we'll be available to you as well. And then we have many different ways that you can stay connected with us um, and other transfer students. Um, mostly uh, we post a lot on our Instagram, so you can follow us on there to get all the insights if you don't wanna see, read all the newsletters every week. Um, and we do have a Facebook page as well as a incoming transfer student Facebook group where there's a lot of um, active transfers in there. So if you would like to kind of meet other transfer students in that aspect, feel free to. Um, if you have time, you can scan the QR code that will lead you to all of our links for our Discord, Spotify, Reddit, YouTube channel. Um, and we'll also have this slide at the end. So if you don't, aren't, aren't able to get it now, you can do it later. And our website's on there as well. Okay, so now we can talk about some of the ways you can get started as a transfer student at UC San Diego. Slide. Okay, so first things first, um, as a new transfer student, you want to make goals, right? You want to make goals for the year and until the time you graduate, you know, so um, a good way to do this would be by breaking them down per quarter. So maybe having three goals per quarter you want to accomplish to ensure that your vision um, leads to clear results by the time you graduate that where, you know, an example could be um, your first quarter, your go goal could be to get all A's. Your second goal could be to uh, make connections with your professors by going to office hours. And the third would be to find a community you feel comfortable with, right? And 
those all together is just going to um, improve your experience at UCSD and ensure that you're accomplishing um, the goals and results that you desire as a transfer student here. So moving on, we can talk about academic success. And here we can talk about the difference between the quarter system and the semester system. And I'm sure some of you are um, have a lot of questions about the difference and similarities, if any. Um, some of the differences, the big one I would say would be the pace, the difference in how fast the quarter system goes, since it is 10 weeks in comparison to uh, most semester systems with which range from 16 to 18 weeks, right? Um, another difference would be that um, at UCSD, the classes will, will be very large compared to your community colleges. So, you know, you could be in a class with 300 people in comparison to having only 30 to 40 people in your classes. Um, another difference would be that um, because the classes are so large, you're going to have uh, teaching assistants, uh, which are also called TAs. and um, the TAs will be in charge for um, a smaller section. So you don't have to worry about like, oh my God, what if I have a question and I don't want to ask the professor because there's so many people, you can easily go to your TA and ask for advice or any help you need um, for your academics. Um, uh, because the classes are also so large, um, some people might think it, it's hard to connect with your professor, but luckily at uh, UCSD, most professors, oh, probably all do have office hours and which you can attend every week and just so you can get to know your professor and they get to know you as well, right? And another difference between these two systems is that um, at UCSD, because it's so short, you're gonna have probably more midterms than you do homework, right? And uh, your community college or your other um, university you attended, you probably had more homework and less tests, right? Because it's a larger period of time. But yeah, some, uh, those are just some of the differences between the two um, systems and uh, some of the ways I would say to get prepared for these, uh, for the difference you're gonna face, right? Once you transfer and start school in the fall would be to just plan ahead and maybe get a planner and just make sure you read your syllabus and everything before class starts to make sure you're prepared and you don't fall behind. Next slide. Okay, now we can talk about academic success a little bit more and how you can be successful as a student, right? So a good way would be to finding your people, right? Um, finding a community within each class. So maybe finding a study group, right? So you all can hold each other accountable of, okay, we have to study on Wednesday for a test on Friday, right? Just so that um, you're finding people who you have similar interests with and uh, people who you are, you know, going to be going through the same struggles with. Um, also, knowing your path, right, is very important. Uh, knowing what you have to um, get done in advance is very important. So talking to your advisors is so important. With registration coming up this month, I would really recommend um, reaching out to your advisors on the virtual advising center and just asking them, you know, what uh, classes they recommend taking, what um, uh, requirements you need to fulfill um, to be able to graduate on time, right? So um, make sure to visit the advising um, office hours once school starts. And um, another tip would be to review your syllabus, like I mentioned earlier, and get your textbooks before um, class starts so that you're already prepared and you don't have to worry about like, oh my God, I'm already falling behind on the readings, right? So give yourself a head start and uh, review the materials in your previous courses. And um, last thing in this slide would be to do a lot of reflection. So pay attention to the things you're doing. And if it's not working out, think of ways you can improve these things. And if you're unsure, um, like Julia said, you can come talk to one of us and we can help you out in how to improve your, um, your experience as a transfer student. So we can help you manage your time or help you maybe set up a schedule so you know what to study um, at what time and just things of that matter. Okay, now we can talk about um, how important it is to find your community at UCSD. Um, because we're transfer students, um, we have a very different path, right, than students who are here for four years because we only have two years to make those connections and to make sure that we get everything on time. So um, finding a community is just gonna improve your overall experience here at the campus. And doing so will just allow you to feel more confident and 
um, feeling comfortable speaking up and being able to feel understood, it's very important. Um, it also increases, increases your likelihood of completing your degree and finding more opportunities for professional development. Uh, some of the ways you can find a community at UCSD, um, because some of you might find uh, or might have heard that it's difficult since UCSD is known for being you know, not very socially active, but that is not true at all. Um, UCSD has a lot of opportunities. You can join a lot of clubs or organizations. There's a lot of college socials, department events, um, campus community centers, um, transfer organizations, and Tau Sigma, which is a uh, national honor society specifically for honors um, transfer students. And um, if you, get a 3.5 or above GPA, um, you can get admitted into this program. And it's very nice because you can um, connect with other transfer students and even um, they even have uh, opportunities for leadership positions and things like that. Awesome. So now we're going to talk a little bit about professional success. Um, before we get into that, though, I do want to highlight that professional success looks different to each individual, right? We all have different professional goals. Um, so for some people, it could be, you know, landing on campus student assistant position. For others, it could be an internship in the medical field. Um, undergraduate research. We do have an office of undergraduate research here at UCSD that you can get plugged into um, and also a series of leadership development programs. Some just some basic tips, prepare your resume now, make sure it's updated with your community college experience. Uh, make sure it says May 2021 that you graduated or if you're still finishing up some courses, making sure that that's updated accordingly with you know, your GPA, any transferable skills, experiences that you want to highlight that may be transferable to some positions you might be applying for, um, all good things to always keep your resume updated. Um, we also recommend, you know, networking with faculty and staff. Um, the beautiful thing is that you already have some, know some staff in CASP, you know me now as well. Um, my name is Ariana. And so you can definitely reach out to any of us if you have any questions, um, but learn faculty, their name, their, what their research is about. And if it interests you, get connected. Uh, we also recommend participating in iLead and other um, co-curricular record opportunities. Um, so leadership experience really looks great, um, you know, post-graduation as you're looking for your first full-time employment opportunity after landing that um, bachelor's degree. So definitely get connected early. And then lastly, if you are a pre-med or health student, get connected with Health Bet early as well. There's a lot of opportunities available through there. And then something else to keep in mind is that we do offer career fairs, um, both virtually and person, um, every quarter around week one or two. So you can think like basically the first week in October, the second week in October is when we you can be expecting a career fair. Um, it's important to seek, you know, career support early, making sure you have your resume, your cover letter, getting those mock interviews experiences, um, maybe meeting with people that you think their job is super cool and you want to learn more. Reach out, um, tell them you're a UCSD student and you would love to learn more about what they do in their day to day. Um, most people are more than ecstatic to share a little bit about what they do and how they can, you know, support you in your endeavors. Um, you can also check out Handshake, the Real Porter Portal, and the Office of Undergraduate Research. Um, the Office of Undergraduate Research really offers a lot of research opportunities to incoming transfer students, um, so be sure to check them out. Um, lastly, if you take anything away, from this presentation, just know that you have what it takes to be successful at UCSD and the Train Transfer Hub is here to support you through that. And then a program that we have within the Triton Transfer Hub is something called Transfer Network Go. Um, this is an opportunity that can help um, uh, jumpstart your, your network at, at UCSD and it can be another great resume builder as well. Um, and so 
uh, you would have one academic year to complete this program and you can receive credit towards your co-curricular record like Ariana already talked about. Um, this is an official record that highlights your student involvement and achievements um, beyond opportunities from the classroom. Um, so this is something that's official to UCSD. Um, and so um, in order to complete this program, you will have to submit your academic, professional, wellness, and social connections that you will participate in workshops and build up. Um, these are all on a pre-approved list that you can find on our website. Um, and so once you finish all of those, you would send that to the transfer hub via email in order to get your CCR approval from us. And you'll also get a certificate of completion. And lastly, within the transfer hub, we really help strive to promote wellness and personal growth within transfer students like yourselves on an individual basis. We know not everyone's transfer experience is the same and we all come from different walks of life, different pathways, and we're all trying to go towards different directions. So like uh, we try and strive to be as individualized as we possibly can. Um, and so whether that includes um, in your transfer experience, you're trying to study abroad. I was trying to study abroad, but then COVID hit. So it was kind of not the greatest, but you know, if you're trying to study abroad, I definitely recommend um, as transfer students, it is, you are able to study abroad as long as you start research early um, and get your applications in and we can help assist you with the study abroad office as well they're really helpful um, and if you're looking in or uh, looking to get involved with community service and engagement on campus or off we can help you with that as well um, and then there is the zone and recreational facilities that are on campus if you're looking for something specific like if you're into yoga or basketball or whatever um, we have those options on campus as well and we also have student health services um, and cap CAPS, not CASP, CAPS, um, which is our, um, yes, yeah, like uh, doctors and like other things in mental health services on campus as well. So any resource that you might need help finding, we can help you as well. Awesome. So that concludes our presentation. Um, we will be available virtually for the rest of the summer, but come the fall, we will be in the biomedical library on the first floor. You can come say hi, um, chat with our peer coaches, um, hang out, study, do whatever you need to do while you're on campus. Um, as Julia mentioned, here's that QR code again. Um, if you just open up your camera, make sure it's focused on that QR code. Um, a little link from the top should drop down. You can just click on it and figure and from there you can go to whatever you may need um, and then you can also follow us on social media um, we're mostly on I think we're on everything at this point at Triton Transfers um, if y'all have any questions yeah Julia also mentioned we're in on TikTok now too so be sure to check us out we have some great videos that are being made by our peer coaches just highlighting deadlines navigating UCSD and ways to get involved um, Let's see, at this time, we're going to go ahead and transition to our transfer student panel. Um, so our two peer coaches, Julia and Ella, will be on it, as well as Sam and Max. Um, this is a great opportunity to ask any transfer student specific questions um, related to campus life, their experiences on campus, anything you may have you may want to know, um, whether it's, you know, related to uh, maybe it's commuting to campus, living on campus, um, anything really, we will try our best to answer your questions. Um, you can either do this by using the raise your hand feature within Zoom or just dropping your questions in the chat. Um, but to get us started, I'm going to ask our panelists to introduce themselves, if you could share your name, your major, and your college, and then where you transferred from. So I could get started. My name is Sam Osuna, pronouns he, him, his, and I just graduated this past month from UCSD, and I transferred in 2019 from College of the Desert, from Palm Desert. I saw some of y'all just transferred from there, so that was nice to see. Um, so yeah, that's me. Oh, my major was ecology as well, and my college was near. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Maximiano Ceballos, but please feel free to call me Max for short. My pronouns are he, him, his. I am a human biology major. I'm also pre-med. I'm in John Muir College, and I transferred last year from Southwestern College. 
and that'll be all for me. Do you want us to introduce ourselves again? <laughs> Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Julia again. I transferred from Sacramento City College in Sacramento. I just graduated this past June as well. And I was an international studies sociology major in Marshall College. Hi again. Uh, my name is Alondra Suna, but Alo for short. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, I'm a psychology major with a minor in human developmental sciences. And uh, I transferred from Southwestern and I'm a part of Rivella College. Awesome. Um, so at this time, I don't see any questions in the chat, but feel free as they come to mind, just drop them. Um, to go ahead and get us started, could you please share a little bit about your experience transitioning from community college to UCSD? What was that transition like for you? Yeah, I can get started on that question. Well, for me, it was a lot. Um, being that I'm the I'm a first generation college student, my parents or my siblings or anyone in the family had never attended college. Attend college. Um, I was the first one to graduate from community college as well, or even attend community college in the first place. Um, so coming to a huge university, I was so nervous. Um, being that first of all, it was the first time living living with other people and sharing a room. I was on a triple, so it was two other guys. It was the first and in an apartment with eight other guys, it was none of us, and two restrooms. So after having my own room, my own restroom my entire life, I finally had to come into a space where I had to, you know, be civil and share and like get to know everybody. And I was very nervous, but it was honestly the best experience of my entire life. Um, living on campus, you know, getting to meet everybody from all over the world. Being that I do come from a small town or a small valley, like mostly everyone here is Hispanic. Um, that's all I've ever really known on my life, all my life growing up. I saw so many different cultures, you know, ethnicities from people from different countries. And that was my favorite part of UCSD, honestly, was meeting people, um, getting out of my comfort zone and opening up my mind to new things. Um, but I think the hardest thing for me was definitely the semester to quarter transition and just the course um, work and load overall. Being that community college to me was the easiest thing ever, honestly. I literally did it in the blink of an eye. I Honestly, I would not try that much in community college. I never even buy a textbook to start off with. Um, just because I would pass with A's just going to lecture and stuff. But at UCSD, it was a completely different um, scenario. I had to actually buy textbooks. I had to study outside of my class, outside of my lectures. Um, I had to put in so much extra work. And my first quarter it really hit me. I, like my grades reflected that, that I was not used to, you know, the quarter system. But um, after the second, after the first quarter, I got the hang of it a little more. And I just started getting better and progressing um, as time went on. But for me, that was definitely the hardest aspect of transferring was the quarter system. I can touch on a little bit. So coming from my community college, I was actually a bigger fan. I mean, I was a social science major, so it might not reflect well with like STEM majors, but um, Semester system was just really long for me. And so coming to UCSD with a quarter system, I enjoyed it a lot more because it was shorter. I was able to learn and like, it kind of stuck in my brain a little bit besides being like dragged out in, in a semester system. Um, but the thing with quarter system, since you are like learning it in 10 weeks and then going into another class, like you kind of forget things quickly. So there is, it's like pros and cons of quarter and semester system. Um, I would just like to give some like advice, I guess, or some encouragement. Um, uh, coming to quarter system, uh, you only need to be taking three classes to be full time. Uh, a lot of people, once they are acclimated to the quarter system, will take four, but don't feel like you need to have that pressure of taking four. Um, a lot of students like myself, I know like some of my friends, we would start off taking four and sometimes if the course load was too much, or if we were going through something at the time, you can drop one class before the drop without a W deadline. Um, and so, yeah, like don't feel like your first quarter, you have to be taking four classes because you know everybody else is taking four classes. Three classes is just fine. And if you're interested in four or you wanna see what the course load is like with four classes, you can enroll in four classes. And then if you would like to, you can drop one and just stick with three for the first quarter or you can stick with all four and it's just up to each student and how you study and like kind of which classes you're taking. Um, and then 
after that, once you're like a little bit more acclimated to the quarter system, then you can kind of judge like, I mean, based off your quarter by quarter plan and stuff like that, you can kind of see like if you want to be taking four classes per quarter or three classes per quarter. Uh, for me, it was very similar to Julia. I really like the quarter system and how it, got, it goes by uh, so fast. So in 10 weeks, you're done with those classes. So I personally really like that uh, compared to the semester, which would be 16 weeks and it will be so long for me. So I would even take fast track classes at my community college because the semester was just really long. But I think it just depends on every person and how you're you're going to get acclimated to this system. So um, you just have to do things that's going to work for you and don't try to do like Julia said, like just take four or five classes because everyone else is doing so, right? Like do what's best for you and what's going to work best for you and be beneficial to you and your academic success. And then, okay. uh, oh. No, go I'm ahead. Just, <laughs> oh yeah, so just to add on to that, uh, I too uh, struggled to adapt to the quarter system at first. Uh, I think my first quarter I actually overslept for a class and like missed a discussion. And so a tip that was given to me and that I still use uh, to this day and like I, I encourage everybody to use this is try to uh, transfer your whole schedule to like maybe like a Google calendar. And then what I like to do is I like to have reminders like 10 minutes before, like if I have a class like at 12, I have it send me a reminder at like 1150 and so on and then like I'll have the like the Google Calendar on my phone, my laptop, and like my tablet, so I get multiple reminders. And so, yeah, by my winter quarter, I basically became you know one of those people that their lives are ran by Google Calendar. And then, in terms of keeping up with the quarter system, it is a, a lot faster than the than the semester. And so, by my second, and then by the end of my second quarter, and then last quarter, I found it really useful to plan out your days. So for example, uh, Monday, you'll do assignments for this class. To half of Tuesday, you'll, you'll finish those assignments and then you move on to the next class or stuff like that. And then definitely plan around your midterms and quizzes because you wanna be prepared for those. And also try to schedule in your breaks. Uh, don't, don't miss out on breaks. Those are very important because you don't wanna burn out uh, but like week seven or, and just be completely tired for the last weeks of the quarter. Thank you, Max, great tips. Um, so I do see a couple questions in the chat and I also see Fernando's hand is raised. Um, Fernando, please go ahead and share your question. Hi, one second real quick. I'm picking up my order. I'm actually on campus right now. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk with you here because it's like, Kind of like once I gave myself a tour, I went to go to the passport office. But I had a question because parking was insane and really hard. So like, what's you guys' tips on like the best place to park? So I know there's a new uh, parking lot opening in six or the new six. And then I went to the one over here on Gilman and that was like hard. I don't like to circle around for a while. So like, what's the best tip for parking over here? I could speak on that a bit. So my first year at UCSD 2019, I didn't take my car just because parking was chaotic. Um, my best friend did take her car and she would take up to two hours spent parking sometimes. It was extremely, extremely chaotic. Um, and we would park in Pangea, which is the closest one to the village or seventh college. Um, so that's the most convenient for us at that time. However, last year in 2020 with the pandemic, they opened up the parking lot closest to Remac for us to use. I'm not sure if that's gonna be open this year, um, but when it was, it was extremely convenient for us because my apartment was right there and I would just walk like a minute. Um, but with the pandemic, parking was not bad at all. There was always parking going on. I mean, parking available. Um, like it was never an issue at all. You, you do have to pay, obviously, but it wasn't an issue finding parking. But before the pandemic, it was chaotic. Is it better to get like a pass? Yes, you have to go online to the parking website and you have to buy your parking pass. Um, I believe now they do it, um, you could do it for up to 30 days, 30 days, or you could do it for as, as long as you want. Okay. Yeah. And I don't want, I don't want, I'm not too sure about the price, but from what I remember, it's around 80 to 100 bucks per month for 30 days. I right. have a friend that was saying that um, by regions, <laughs> you could like park there and then take a shuttle to uh, UCSD for free. 
yeah if you live nearby um in la jolla area i'm sorry i just laughed because when i said the price your reactions anyways <laughs> um if you live nearby la jolla there's the bus that takes you and i we do get free a, a free bus pass well it's not free but they give it to um they give it to us a free bus pass within ucz and you could use it you could download the app and you could just show it to them and it's super convenient there's so many parking i mean bus stops all around la jolla like where marshall's is at um at utc everywhere and i use that a lot too as well when i wanted to go to the mall or to like eat outside in la jolla it was really convenient to use the, the, the bus yeah, Gabby, I know you can um, either park at Miramar College and apply for a free uh, uh, parking permit, and then you could just take the bus to UCSD, or you can also park at the Torrey Pines State Beach, and you can buy an annual pass, which would be cheaper than getting the one at UCSD, but you would also have to take the shuttle to UC, and also the Old Town Transit Center, and you can park there free, and you would just have to ride the MTS bus to campus. You're the best. Thank you. Alrighty, yeah. so we're gonna start answering um, the questions and the way they were received, unless someone has any last minute parking tips. I just wanted to say about the shuttle on campus. I use that all the time, especially because I saw the question about living in, at the village and instead of college and how to manage that since it is far away from classes. I always use the shuttle always to get to my classes. Cause if not, to go to Reval would take me like 20 to 30 minutes walking and I was lazy or to go to Warren, you know, it was another 20, 30 minutes, depending on how fast I'm walking. Um, so I always use a shuttle um, when I was on campus. It's free and so convenient. Um, they have a bunch of times that the shuttle passes by and yeah. Yeah, and they also did open like a couple new um, parking structures. So that should make it a little better than it was last year because I did live on campus. I'm living on campus right now and the parking was really bad the first year, but now it's getting better slowly but surely. So that will make it better. Yeah, so uh, a couple common questions we received is about navigating campus, um, specifically with living on campus. Um, any tips for getting around campus, navigating you know, your classes, the buildings? Uh, for getting to know campus, so something uh, I used to do a lot uh, last year, even because of the pandemic, since none of the gyms were open or anything like that, uh, during my free times, I would just walk around campus. And so um, what you could do is if you plan on moving down to campus uh, for this next school year, uh, if you move in a little bit earlier, uh, I would recommend to definitely walk around and visit, you know, Geisel, uh, the different colleges, and also um, try to see where your classes are at. And that way you can also plan ahead and see how many minutes it will take you to get from class to class. And yeah, just if, I would just recommend to, if you want to explore campus on your own. And, and pretty much that's what I did uh, last year. Yeah, so campus is huge. So if you have a bike, a longboard, scooter, feel free to bring it, especially in the off chance you have a 10 minute break in between classes that are on opposite sides of campus. I've had that once and I ran one of the two times and I was like, no, this is too far. So I just got a scooter like, <laughs> um, and yeah, just the, the easiest way to get familiar with it is just walking around kind of like Max already mentioned. Um, and definitely bring shoes that you are comfortable walking in and also um, make sure you're planning enough time to get from class to class because if you're living in seventh college you're at the very tip top of campus and sometimes like your closest class might be 20 minutes walk away so make sure you like I kind of mentioned in the chat already I always made sure to go find where my classes were before the first day of class just so once it's like at 8 a.m and you don't know where it is and you don't want to show up late um, and so I highly recommend going to find those. Sometimes it took me a long time to find it, even when I was just like taking my time. So some of them could be kind of hidden, but um, yeah, definitely find your classes prior to the first day of class. The next question, question we received is, what is something you wish you had known when you were an incoming transfer student? 
And maybe it's more than one thing. That's okay too. Um, I can go first for this one. Uh, so something I really wish somebody would have told me was that uh, UCSD was going to be much more exhausting than any community college. Um, I think my first quarter, I thought it was like, it was crazy how exhausted I was. And then like, and so all I would recommend to avoid that is make sure to schedule in breaks. Uh, I'm not saying force yourself to like take a break, but definitely try to take breaks. Those are very important. And then because uh, when I would get like super, like very tired, like towards the end, then I would just not do anything the whole day. So like I would procrastinate. And then my first quarter uh, towards the end, I did have to like pull all nighters to catch up on my classes and those were not fun. And so, yeah, so if someone would have told me, you know, it's gonna be super fast paced, uh, you're gonna feel really tired if you don't force yourself to take breaks like periodically. Uh, if someone would have told me that, then I think I would have done better in my first quarter. And then knowing that I was able to like implement that into my next quarters and like, I didn't have to pull all nighters like winter and spring. I can go next. Um, something I wish I would have known before was how to prepare for lectures the right way, at least for me. Um, something I learned is that printing out your notes, the PowerPoints before class is so helpful rather than having to write down all the notes and like, you know, you're not even paying attention because you're trying to like catch up because they speak so fast. So I would really recommend printing out your notes for like each week so that when you go, you just, you're listening and then you just write you know, some notes down on the side that you think will be important you know, to keep in mind. I kind of wanted to piggyback a little bit off of Max. Um, I just want to say that burnout and imposter syndrome are real. They are valid for you to feel. And um, there are a lot of support systems to help prevent and to help like get you through it. Um, at a big top university, a uh, research university like UCSD, there's a lot of students, especially non-transfer students who have seemed to have had like a head start on things. And as transfer students like myself and some of my friends, we've kind of seen that it's really common to get caught up in seeing all of the things that your classmates might be already doing and you feeling behind. Um, just know that's totally valid, but know that you are on your own path and your own track and um, just because someone is ahead of you and what might seem like the same path you're trying to go on um, doesn't mean that you're like behind. Um, because transfer students come in at the, the time that we come in, it is a little bit different and a little bit harder in some senses to get acclimated to being a student at UCSD. Um, but that's totally fine, it's totally normal. Um, and if you ever are feeling this burnout or imposter syndrome and you need someone to talk about it, that's what the transfer hub is for. We try and help mitigate that um, and other like CASP uh, mentors as well. Um, we're all here for you and just know that it is normal, it is common, um, but don't feel like you're alone in a situation if you find yourself in that situation. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to add some things. I completely agree with printing on your lectures beforehand and your notes or writing them down before lecture because it goes by so fast. By the time the professor is speaking, you've only gotten down like one bullet point and you have to skip a bunch of sections and go back after lecture and watch the, it's a mess. So please print them out, write them down beforehand. Um, another thing is that I wish I would have known how fast time goes by. Um, I know we all mentioned with the quarter system, but um, even with like having summer break and winter break and Thanksgiving and spring break, you technically don't have a whole two years, you know, you have way less than two years. Um, at UCSD, um, what, 60 weeks, that's over like a year and six weeks. So not even technically two years, you know? Um, so I wish I would have known so I could have started preparing and making connections and getting internships and experience earlier on, um, but it's never too late. And the other thing I want to mention that I wish I knew going in because beforehand everyone was like oh mg usd is so socially dead like it's so boring it is not trust me it is so much fun there are so many 
ways to get involved and make friends and go out if that's what you're interested in of course if you're not then that's fine but if you are looking you know to go out and make friends and party and like have a good social life it is totally possible trust me i did it but you definitely have to um you know put in work to look for those type of people or that group you know you're not gonna knock on your door and be like well actually they might knock on your door and be like like hey like you want to come with us but like the majority of the time you have to actually like look for those people you know and like find the group that you fit in with um but don't believe the rumors it is not socially dead it's really up to you to make it your experience and however you want to and you can tailor it how any way that you want so um if you want it to be socially dead then that's how it's gonna be and if not then it will not be socially dead but i just want to make that clear that ucsd is not socially dead there is so much opportunity to have fun and explore and experience new things Um, for this next question, I also invite any cast um, staff members to feel free to chime in, but any tips for student parent success? Hey, so I'm trying to pull up. We have a students who are parents website. Um, we also have that listed on our program booklet as well. Uh, one of the very last pages um, in this website has resources and content. Thank you, Karen, for dropping that in there. Um, resources specifically for students who are parents or for students who have dependents um, as well. And I, I think um, if I can share, and I know probably some of our staff may chime in as well. Um, is just thinking a little bit more in terms of what the scheduling will look like. I know that there will be um, sacrifices, I believe, that will have to be made just given what um, scheduling looks like. But just know that uh, HGH does offer parent and family housing, um, which may be a potential um, you know, option for you as well. Um, I know, you know, the um, on that particular page, you know, they, they try to find uh, also like child friendly, uh, maybe study spaces or areas. So I know that can be a little tricky to navigate um, as well, but I really encourage you to check out um, that website. And there are um, services, specifically um, staff members who are called case managers um, that are really a resource to help assist students, whether it be for campus resources or community resources, should a student, you know, be trying to navigate that and maybe experience some difficulties, challenges, or just trying to figure that out, as well as um, other, I would say, like an organization to be able to connect other students who are parents as well, to have that community. Um, as Karen mentioned too in the chat, and maybe Karen, if you want to chime in, please feel free. The Women's Center also has support groups um, for parents and caretakers as well. Yeah, the, and you can look, I don't think they have their fall calendar up yet, but it's just women.ucc.dd. You can look and I, just to add that like all genders are welcome at the Women's Center. Um, so they have support programs for fathers and folks who are non-binary. So everyone's welcome um, at the Women's Center, um, but they do have support groups with other student, par um, student parents. And also I know some of you may be taking care of parents um, or other family members. Um, so they have support programs for them as well. And I do believe CAPS has some support groups too. Um, if you look under their page, caps.ucc.edu under um, support groups. Um, I will also add that the Triton Transfer Hub is more than happy and ready to support you and your dependents in the Triton Transfer Hub, um, whether it's you just, you know, studying in between classes and you have your kiddo with you that day, um, we welcome all students and their dependents in our space. So excited to see some of you, hopefully, fingers crossed, I love kids personally, so. And then one thing, hello everyone, Kimberly from CASP. Um, one thing that I did want to mention is that we understand that 
along with a lot of our folks coming back to school and you know maybe having dependents or children or young ones um, certain expenses might come along um, such as daycare and all of that so I highly encourage you all that if you remember um, Michelle from this morning is our financial aid liaison so if for any reason you may need to um, consider adding a budget add-on because you have to pay for child care. If you need a new computer because you're going to be in class and you've had your computer for like the past five, 10 years, we can work with including that in your budget as well and see what aid is available for you. So um, thank you, Rhea, for dropping off Michelle's email. Please feel free to reach out to her and talk to her. And if there is any additional aid available that we can make available to you, um, she will work to make sure that we can make that transition as easy as possible. Um, so, you know, definitely make sure to check out the financial aid office. If you do know there are going to be some expenses that maybe are not included in your current um, financial aid budget. So wanted to put that out there, um, but definitely reach out to Michelle and let her know. Perfect. Um, so we have a couple of minutes left. Our next question is, where can we find the classes we need to take and check our progress? I would say to um, definitely talk to an advisor just to make sure that, you know, they double check everything because this is just, I'm telling you from the general knowledge we have. But I would say, um, look at your degree audit which is, you can find it in your Trident link tools. And there it's gonna tell you which courses you've already satisfied, uh, which requirements and which ones you haven't. So for the ones you haven't, you could see maybe you still need to take math. It could tell you, you could take either math 10A, 10B, you know, the different options. So that would just be a way to kind of know where you're standing at and how many either GEs you still need or major requirements. Um, I also want to bring your attention to um, the chat that Maria just left. She said, um, you'll also have the opportunity to receive this information tomorrow during your college um, advising session. So some good homework for tonight. Think about your questions you might have, write them down, and you'll have that opportunity um, to ask tomorrow. Let's see. Um, we have about five minutes left of our session together. Um, I guess my last question for you all would be what general advice um, would you leave for our try and transfer incoming students? I would just say that um, all of you are here for a reason. So you're more than capable of succeeding as a student here. And just do whatever you were doing at your community college, because I know you were doing great if you got into UCSD. So just keep doing that. Don't stress too much. Just make sure you're meeting deadlines and, you know, enjoy it. Don't stress too much about it. You know, we're here. You need to have a good time while also, you know, doing what you have to do. And definitely make use of all the resources on campus. There are a lot. And I would know because we recommend you and refer you to a lot of different ones. Um, but when it comes to like research, if you're looking for that internships, jobs on campus or off, um, networking, um, there's a lot of professional workshops um, and different activities. There's a lot of like mental health care activities and social events. Um, put yourself out there to go to clubs and organizations if you're into that. Also, if you're into sports, go join a sports team. Um, I am one that didn't go to the Career Center until my very last few weeks as a student. Um, I don't recommend doing that because the people in the Career Center really care for each and individual that they talk to. Um, and they're definitely here to help as, long, as well as everybody else here on campus. Um, and so don't be afraid to explore all of the different options. And if you don't know where to start, that's where we're here to help too. Um, but yeah, make use, there's a lot of different resources and they're mostly free to you as a student. So make sure that you're kind of, or free in the sense that you're kind of paying, but like it's in your student fees. So like go make use of the things that you're paying for 
Um, and yeah, that's what I would say. <laughs> The best, that, the best advice that I could give to you all is to just find a good balance between academics, your social life, and time for yourself and everything else that matters. Um, I know I could get hectic, you know, trying to balance everything out, but it's possible. Trust me. I did it. So many others have done it. Y'all did it through community college, through everything else that I've gone through. It's super possible. Just have fun. Enjoy your time, please. It's like I said, it's less than two years. UCSD changed my life. It was the best experience ever, you know. We have the we had the honor and privilege of getting into this amazing programs cast we know and getting this amazing scholarship so take advantage of it take, like julia said take advantage of all the resources go to caps um, i'm not afraid to mention you know i'm not ashamed to mention that i went to caps you know the counseling and psychological services you know i hope that's a stigma that we could get rid of as time passes by you know getting help i went to it um it, they were very helpful dr salcedo was my counselor, she helped me through so much during my UCSD years. You know, she's amazing. So if you ever need anyone, go reach out to them. Please um, cast us as well. You know, if you need any help with, with anything, come to us. I try to transfer help as well. So many other resources. Um, yeah, and that's the only advice that I could give you is honestly just have fun, enjoy your time, um, and be open-minded to everything, to individuals, to people, to experiences, to jobs, you know, everything. And once again, like congratulations, everyone. Um, I'm going to drop my email. I did graduate already, um, but regardless, you could still email me for anything. I will be living in La Jolla still. Um, I will be working at USD. Um, but like I said, regardless, y'all can email me with anything, any questions y'all have. If y'all need me to show you around school, anything, please email me. I'm here to help you all. Um, that's my email. So please reach out to me if you have any questions or anything. Um, and um, I just want to thank the Trident Transfer Hub again for coming here and presenting to us. Um, thank you for everyone for your time for being here. Ariana, if you have any last minute um, words, feel free to go ahead and say them. Yeah, I just you know want to thank Cass for inviting us. Um, thank you so much for your attention, your questions, great questions. Um, just know, you know, if you take anything away from here, is that there are a lot of staff and faculty here to support you and your success, whatever that you know, whatever your goals are, um, we're here to push you along the way, um, be an ear to listen to and connect you to the resources that you need. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna leave um, in the chat just the link to schedule an appointment um, with one of our peer coaches. If you have any questions about classes, uh, navigating campus, anything along those lines that maybe you didn't get answered today and you'd like to meet with someone on a one-on-one -on -one, um, basis with, we invite you to do that as well. Um, but thank you so much and it was a pleasure and best of luck at UCSD and I hope to see you in the train transfer hub. Thank you and do not forget everyone we have cast chat starting at 2 30 right now so if you register for one the link is on the cast 101 website so please go find the chat that you register for and go join that right now at 2 30. Thank you again everybody we'll see you in your cast chats. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye thank you. Bye, thank, thank you guys. You. Hello, does anyone have any questions? I had a quick question. Um, I'm registered for one of the CASP chats, but I'm not seeing the email link. I never had received one for the uh, group I selected. Yeah, we can actually drop the link. Um, so the CASP chat links are found on our CASP 101 website. I can go ahead and drop, um, oh, Thanks, Kimberly. So you can find all of the cast chat links um, in the link that Kimberly just dropped in the chat. Yay. And we're done, yay. Well done. Oh, I think.
I was the one that was recording on my phone, but then my phone died. So now I can't turn off the recording. So we'll just have to edit that later. Yeah, because 